I lay there dying in hospital when my grandpa Willie came in. I'd been dreading this all day. The old man had always liked to gloat. He had gloated when he beat me at a football game as a kid. He gloated when I tried to fix a bike on my own and failed. And now, as he entered the room, wherein the body he had stolen from me a week ago, I anticipated the smug grin he would plaster all over my face and actually felt glad I was leaving soon. So when my body came in looking frenzied, I was shocked as all hell. Tony, he said as he came closer, thank God. I was blurring in and out of consciousness, but willed my, uh, his eyes open. Grandpa Willie had been visiting me every day for the last week, looking great. Despite never showing any interest in my style before, he wanted to show he could be me perfectly. They'll find out eventually. I would say through the husky breaths my grandpa's failing lungs would allow me. Fat chance, buddy, he would laugh, <laughs> smoothing a leather gloved hand over the slick black pompadour I'd been wearing since I was 15. I dare say I'm as good at being Tony the Greaser as you are, so don't worry, your life is in good hands. Now my hair was looking frazzled and my black studded jacket and white vest were haphazardly thrown on. He laughed in an unhinged sort of way as he leered over my hospital bed. Hey, it's gonna be alright kiddo, he said, holding his own frail wrinkled hands in my firm strong ones. We can switch back now. You will die in a matter of hours but I will gladly take my body back and die instead. Now quickly, read the words on this paper. I wheezed a little. I can barely talk, old man, I said. Grandpa Willie ignored this and took a strip of paper out of my jacket pocket and shoved it painfully into his hand. Clutching it for dear life, I held it to the old eyes the old bastard had given me. I squinted as the words blurred in and out of focus. Oh, right, uh, here. Grandpa Willie pushed his reading glasses onto me, the pressure pinching his big crooked nose. The words were clearer, but I was still losing focus. The words were, I think, Latin. Well, what you waiting for, kid? Grandpa Willie gesticulated with my gloved hand. Read the words, I've got them with me here. He pulled another tiny piece of paper out of my pocket. We just have to say the words together and we'll be back in our bodies. I turned my attention back to the words excitedly. I was going to be me again. I was going back to the life this old bastard had snatched away. And all it would take would be reading words just like the one he had asked me to read last week. And then I paused for a minute. Grandpa Willie had seemingly been doing nothing but enjoying my life for the past few days. He had always come in with a smug smile, talking endlessly about how grateful he was for the new cock and how he had fucked half the rockabilly group I was in, as well as a third of my gym. And afterwards he would talk about how perfectly he had been living my life and how no one suspected a thing. And before he left, he would be sure to say, see ya, Gramps. So what changed? Why did Grandpa suddenly want to die? The door creaked open and my Grandpa jumped out of my skin, turning to face the door. I rolled his eyes to the empty door and saw nothing but the empty hospital hallway beyond. Although when I turned to Grandpa, he still looked at the doorway like he had seen something out of his worst nightmare. My eyes were wide. A single tear rolled down my cheek, and when he next spoke, my voice came out high. Tony, do as I say right now. I looked back at the open door. My vision blurred again, and suddenly I saw the outline of something. 
Something gnarled, something dark and sharp. Something that prowled in the direction of Grandpa Willie, who was reeling my body back from whatever it was. Suddenly, Grandpa Willie grabbed me by his shoulders and looked me squarely in the eyes. Do you want to die? For Christ's sake, kid, read the goddamn words. Shaken, I turned my attention to the piece of paper shaken in the frail hands Grandpa gave me and focused as much as possible on reading the lines in between husky gasps and screeching wheezes. Sit in your ears. Amen. Daddy. That's it. Grandpa Willie squeezed his shoulder encouragingly. That's a fella. Now say it again. Sit in Amandari. We said it together as quickly as we could manage. My borrowed chest was feeling heavier with each passing moment, and it was harder to focus on the words. Grandpa would look behind him and would slap me roughly, waking me up a little. As my vision blurred, I could see the gnarled something raise what looked like a head behind Grandpa, like some horrible distortion of a pirate's parrot. My eyes were getting waterier and more terrified as Grandpa Willie kept repeating the words, my leather-gloved hands bruising his frail shoulders. And then, as it seemed like I was gonna die right there, Everything went white, and the old man body I had been dying in for the past week melted away. With what I could only describe as a rushing feeling, sensation slapped back all at once. I was sitting on a hospital chair. I was breathing heavily, but clearly, my arms and legs felt strong. I looked down to see the gut and man boobs I had all week were no longer there. No, <laughs> my toned abs and pecs were back. I shot to a nearby mirror in the hospital room and saw myself, a 30-year-old greaser, my body looking unkempt and feeling a little fatigued, but it was still my body, still my face with its goatee and pouty lips. I looked clearly through my brown eyes for the first time in a week and breathed a sigh of relief, my own voice clearly coming out. Well done, kiddo. I turned to face the old man who had stolen my body. He wheezed in between hacking coughs, his white face way too pale for his fat body. I realized then how close I had come to death. Grandpa Willie looked like a goddamn emaciated Santa Claus. He reached up a shuddering talon of a hand to me and I couldn't help it. I backed away. The old man looked down, his sunken face becoming more sad by the second. I am so sorry for what I did. I worked so hard all my life for my father for that bitch woman I married and your mother God knows some people won't be helped what did I get in the long run a faulty heart after I found that book on the construction site, I thought God had sent me another chance. I remembered the old book he had told me to bring to his hospital bed, the book he had told me to read from, which I had done in confusion. I remembered waking up weak and feeble and seeing myself smirking, clutching the book to my chest. I remember being unable to breathe. I remember nurses flooding in, putting a plastic mask on me, calling me Mr. Douglas. You were gonna let me die in your place, Grandpa. I'm sorry, Tony. My Grandpa said. I shouldn't. I thought dying would be the worst thing. What was that thing that came in here, Grandpa? Not my finest moment. I never read the fine print, said Grandpa. The book said that I shouldn't 
cast the spell if my original body was near death. Switching with someone when I was going to die soon was gonna curse my soul. I listened to all this and realized that I was right on the money. Grandpa Willie didn't have a change of heart. He would have just let me die and lived my life like nothing happened, except someone had forced him. Go to hell, Grandpa. Grandpa managed to sigh. I deserve that. I hope one day, when I'm gone, you'll... Then my grandpa turned to face the ceiling and gasped. Nothing was there, but I saw the sheets on my grandpa's bed dip as if two invisible feet were standing there. Then I heard a growl. It was deep and rabid, and I realized the creature from before was invisible, but there. What? No! Grandpa Willie dug deeper into his pillow, his eyes wide and terrified. I made it right. I, I gave the body back. Then I heard a deep, booming voice that made my body run cold. No remorse, only fear. We will take you. Please! Grandpa Willie slowly started crying, wheezing horribly as he did so. Please, I, I made it right. No remorse, only fear. Then the lights went out, and in the gloom I saw the creature that was hunched over my grandpa Willie. It raised a taloned hand up to the ceiling, and with a swipe, the lights came back on, and the creature was no longer there. I stood there in shock. Grandpa Willie was just staring at the ceiling, his face frozen, the breath leaving his body with a gasp. I ran for a doctor, eyeing me suspiciously, the doctor also checked my grandpa's neck and chest. Apparently, she thought I might have murdered the old bastard. When she could find no sign of a cut or a bruise, she declared his time of death, and I went to call my mom and grandma. The doctor decided it was best to get my grandpa's body to the morgue before mom and grandma got here. The look of horror on his face might scare them. They wheeled my grandpa away, the doctor still looking suspiciously at me. I found my pack of smokes and my comb in my jacket pocket. I decided to fix myself up before I had a smoke. I went to the nearest bathroom and I wet my comb. Deciding that a full pompadour might be a little too difficult with my shaky hands, I slicked back the sides and styled the top into a jelly roll do. My grandpa had been bald as an egg, and as shallow as it sounds, I'd missed my hair. I had also missed that six-pack of mine, and as I pissed into a urinal after doing my touch-up, I realized I fucking missed my bladder control. And then, the thought of that creature towering over my grandpa Willie came into my brain, and I knew that if any of those things went away, well, shit, there were worse things to lose. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed that, please consider subscribing for more. I've been your host, Tom, and until next time, stay sleepless.